All right, guys, before we hop into the build, let me preface this by saying you are going to receive amalgamation of hate mail if you run this build. So if you are unable to handle criticism, I highly suggest you stay away from this build. But if you enjoy the criticism and all the hate mail, then yeah, stay tuned. So this build has been around for a while. I've hesitated to feature it here on the channel because quite frankly, I didn't farm all the sets. I don't like playing Sam classes and I do not want this to go super public because I don't want people zerging me down with this because to be honest there's not much you can do if you have a couple people jumping you with this build uh, you're just screwed there's there's no counterplay okay so you've been warned hopping over into the character sheet we are a dark elf on this build you can either run imperial or also khajiit it's entirely up to you we have all of our points dumped into stamina for this we're running the smoked bear haunch now if you don't have access to smoke bear haunch because it is quite expensive you can use jewels and misrule it will give you a little bit less health and a little bit less recoveries but it is by far a much cheaper alternative the minus we're running is the serpent and of course the vampire stays three there's all of our stats completely unbuffed if we can't fully buff up on our back bar here you're expected around to have a 6100 weapon and spell damage now in tier with continuous attack this will get up to 66 i think 6700 our resistances are going to go up to 30k which is very very strong then on our front bar with minor prophecy you'll get minor prophecy even from your source or passives you get up to 33 percent critical chance which is really good because we're running crit surge which is going to passively heal you and then our spell penetration could be higher if we're running a mace instead i chose to run a sword but uh, that's entirely up to you if you want to get a little bit more penetration or alternatively for your mundus you can run the lover mundus and then on your jewelry what we go over you just swap one of the jewelry lists from weapon spell damage to stamina recovery and it offsets that so hopping over into our first set is going to be the Master's Perfected Dual Wield. Now Dual Wield is going to buff one of our abilities on the bar. It is going to buff Rending Slashes. It makes Rending Slashes hit like a freaking freight train, guys. So we're just going to quickly cover Rending Slashes. It is a 10k spammable, okay? It will apply a 31.5k bleed damage over 20 seconds. It inflicts hemorrhage, which reduces your opponent's max health by 10%, and it slows them by 30% for 4 seconds. As you can see, it's a super strong set to have if you don't get it, i highly suggest farming it now i do have a sword and a mace ideally you want two maces but i haven't recrafted it so i mean you can min max this build a little bit more than what i have it so on the main hand i have earned hone you may want sharpen entirely up to you if you feel like your spell penetration and physical penetration is lacking so we have a poison damage glyph and then we also have a disease damage glyph that is going to apply the befoulement effect reducing people's incoming healing by 16 percent which is really really strong plus it's going to pair very very well with one of the sets we're running Next set we're running the back bars base trans ice staff. You do not need the perfected version because the perfected version is only going to give you uh, offensive penetration. Since this is on your back bar, it really doesn't matter whatsoever. Running a berserker glyph on the back bar, or you could run escapist poisons. Escapist poisons are really strong because it will give you 4.5 seconds of CC immunity and will also root your opponent. Not only does it root your opponent, but it roots their mount as well, which will give you four and a half seconds to kind of close the gap and knock them off the mount in case they're trying to run away from you. So when it comes to the armor weights, we are rocking one light, three medium, three heavy. On the heavy pieces, you will want reinforced, and on the other pieces, you will want well fitted, okay? So when it comes to your enchantments, please run prismatic enchants on everything that you can afford, especially your big pieces. And what I mean by big pieces is your head, your chest, and your legs, because that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Next up we're running is our monster set. This is Marcelux. Now Marcelux is very, very strong, guys, very underrated. I didn't really use it until as of late, and I'm absolutely in love with so it'll give you a line of stamina and when you complete a medium or a heavy charge attack you will do this conal effect of disease damage in front of you hitting all of your opponents and what it does and why it's so strong is the effect is amplified by up to 300% depending on how many negative effects you have on your opponent. Now on this build, there's 13 to 15 negative effects you can have on your opponent at any given time. So generously, let's just say only 10 negative effects you'll have on your opponent. This is essentially doubling the damage of this dot. So it's going to be a 17k dot over four seconds. And that's going to be like an AOE in front of you, you know, depending on how many negative effects people have on them. So if you have a, like a dual partner or you have a group of people running this, right? You know, everyone's running Mars Licks and you have another person applying a bunch of negative effects to your opponent this is going to hit that 300 threshold very very easily next set we're running is mars bomb now there isn't another set you could run if you don't like mars bomb yes they did nerf mars but they really didn't need nerf it that much so the only thing that they nerfed i remember last patch this on tooltip instead of restoring 1200 health every time an effect falls off or uh, gets purged or whatever it was at 1800 now it's only 1200 which really isn't that big of a deal when you think about it but what makes this set so strong is that you have a complete purge this purge is 
everything on you stats effects damage you know just, just, just whatever and it's on a 15 second cooldown and, and every single time this happens this will give you a burst seal per effect removed times you know the 1239 here on tooltip which is very very strong and since this is a sorcerer and we don't have wards we don't even have a burst seal you need some sort of set that's going to give you some healing now if you are running in duos right you're a duo partner you're running in a small group instead of running mars bomb i would highly suggest running dragon's appetite so dragon's appetite whenever you deal damage to a bleeding target with non-bleed damage this is effectively kind of like Drogrican. all of your effects are going to do 225 more damage but upon reaching um what's called these these dragons appetite stacks you can get these stacks every half second every time you deal damage upon reaching 10 stacks you're going to get a burst heal for 11k and i heard this can crit i don't know if it can or not uh, some people tell me yeah some people tell me no i've never really taken time to notice but like every five seconds if you keep your dots up you're going to be getting like a 10k heal which is very very strong next set is going to be one piece training this is for the health and then also a one piece druids uh, this is also for our health our mythic of choice is going to be sea servants coil surprise surprise uh, if you are solo and you feel like your heals are lacking you don't necessarily have to run sea servants coil a really really good alternative is ring of the pale order because you're going to have effectively 20% life steal on every bit of damage that you do but the only downside is you can't be healed by anyone else but if you're running solo it really doesn't matter and to finish out the jewelry we do have two mars bomb ideally instead of infused weapon and spell damage you will want bloodthirsty weapon and spell damage um i just haven't had the time to transmute nor the transmute stones to change them over but as soon as i get enough transmute stones i'm going to do so now let's hop over into the skills and talk about it a little bit so the very first skill is going to be crystal weapon and this is a must don't try to run frag because frag is rng based this you can have up literally any single time that you need it and this is where most of your pressure comes from this is nutty when you combine it with rending slashes so it's going to reduce your opponent's armor by a thousand plus is going to make your next ability um, besides this ability again cost 10 percent less and again the beauty of this is you can have this damage whenever you want it whereas if you try to use frag it's rng plus it can be dodge rolled and next is haunting curse now haunting curse is really, really strong this gets to like even 13k on tooltip i mean it's it, it, it actually hits like a truck um now you may be asking yourself uh, why aren't you running about armaments because you know this is going to increase your stamina it does about the same damage as curse well first of all this can be dodged and it's kind of a wonky cast animation i don't really like it that much um, but curse is undodgeable plus you get two ticks of it and it's really easy to time your burst around it so alternatively to haunting curse you can run spin to win on this build um if you really wanted to if you do want to run spin to win to have you a little bit more aoe coverage i highly suggest you change your monster set um to battle Orders because this is going to give you the most bang for your buck you know a dawnbreaker spin to win is a uh, really really strong Going over into our next ability is going to be Camouflage Hunter. This is going to give us our Major Prophecy, which is 10% crit. And this is also going to give us Minor Berserk when we're flanking an enemy. And we're pretty much always flanking an enemy because we have Streak. And of course, the bread and butter of the build is going to be Rending Slashes. I already covered the tooltips of this earlier. It gets up to a hellacious amount and it's really, really cheap to cast as well. Uh, now our CC, our gap closer, our get the heck out button is going to be streak and that's pretty much essential. And then our ultimate choice is going to be Dawnbreaker Smiting. Moving over to the back bar, four of these abilities are quintessential and you really can't take them off. Otherwise, you're just going to get squished. So you definitely need Dark Deal, okay? You're going to need Resolving Vigor 100%. You're going to need Critical Surge 100%. And you're going to need Hurricane or Lightning Form 100%. Now, Hurricane is better just because the AoE is better. And the more crits you can get from Critical Surge to heal you, because this is going to give us a lot of passive healing over time based on our crits. So having a bigger AoE radius to help hit people and crit often is a, a lot better than Lightning Form, in my opinion. And circling back around to our quote-unquote flex spots, uh, if you're not running Vatran, if you don't like that set or maybe you don't have it, um, you don't necessarily have to run elemental susceptibility just a suggestion but if you are running it definitely run elemental susceptibility because this is your access to major breach and it's also going to apply all of the status effects you know the burning children can cut status effect every seven and a half seconds and it lasts three seconds when you apply it so is there like a 50 percent uptime on the status effects which is really really strong back bar ultimates you can run the charge atro to give you more aoe and stun coverage you can run the sigic order skill line a uh, temporal guard to give you iron protection on the back bar or you can run overload now a really good trick with overload is that you can toggle it on the back bar and then go to your front bar and still use it so kind of take a look here so we'll just go ahead and toggle it we'll go to our front bar you can still do all your rotations of all your abilities um, this is really good for softening up your opponent 
And the best part about it is when you're softening up your opponent, right? You can also activate your front bar ultimate. So uh, just go ahead and let me show you really quick. Um, just another tip, if you want to cancel or untoggle your lightning overloads, so take it out and check it out or through lightning bolts, shooting lightning bolts. If you just animation cancel Donnie, it'll, it actually takes it away from you and toggles it. So that kind of saves you from going back to your back bar and toggling it and then going back to your front bar and, you know, doing your thing. It essentially saves you like two seconds if you do it that way. Just animation cancel the Donnie and get out overload what I'm trying to say. But back to my point, you can overload and then when you think your opponent is about an execute range, you just activate Dawnbreaker as a finisher. So I have a little section here to kind of show you the combo. It's a lot better to actually see it and then uh, me tell you about it. So we'll just kind of go through this step by step just so it's palatable. I'm going to let it go through um, on its own. Then I'll just kind of show you uh, my thought process to how to pull off the combo. Okay, there's pretty much the very basic combo without incorporating Dawnbreaker. Okay, so let's kind of run that back a little bit. So notice that we have zero stats effects on our opponents up here. See, there's there's you know there's there's literally you know nothing going on. There's no there's no debuffs. There's no no nothing. We're on this at 0.25 speed. So you want to start by applying your elemental susceptibility. Okay, followed by usually you can use rending to go ahead and get the dot hammer stats effect, and then you either want to use curse or you can use crystal weapons. It's entirely up to you which one you need active. Just as long as you activate both of them, you can get your light attacks off, okay? And then this is just a very basic combo without Dawnbreaker. So you're going to actually streak, hold a medium attack weave right here. You're gonna light attack, medium attack weave, and then that's when Marslix all goes off the exact same time. So there's the basic combo. Play this back a few times and it'll eventually make sense. Truth be told, I still ended up losing that duel even though we hit the combo literally every single time. This is just a really good player and there's a lot of really good players over here in the dueling arena. Now this is an example with the Dawnbreaker combo. I'm gonna let it play out in full speed and then we'll break it down in slower mode. All right, so we'll just go ahead and kind of run this back in a little bit slower mode. Now, I did mess up on my curse here. I did not have curse applied at the perfect time, um, but we was able still to get enough burst in order to kill our opponent. That's why I went for the burst there. So ideally, you want to time this around your curse. See, right now, I need to be using curse literally right now and then use crystal weapons, okay? So um, I didn't use curse. I mean, that's okay. Um, that is a little bit of misplay on my part, but we did get a rending slashes out. So with a Dawnbreaker combo, it's actually a lot simpler. You just want to Dawnbreaker and then medium attack weave afterwards, okay? But other than that, the combo is actually pretty clean. And uh, yeah, there you go. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. Play this back a couple times if you guys are still struggling or if you have any further questions, just hit me up in Discord and I'll try to explain that way. Now hopping over into our champion points in the blue tree, we'll quickly go through these running Ironclad, Deadly Aim, Mastered Arms, Focus Mending. Red tree is as follows, running Survival Instinct, Sustained by Suffering, Fortified, Balanced Vitality. Now you could potentially drop either Fortified or Balanced Vitality and put in Celerity if you want to be a speedy boy. Hopping into the green tree, you definitely want to be rocking Liquid Efficiency in case you're using expensive potions like Heroism Potions or maybe you're rocking Tripods. It's good to save money where you can, right? War Mount, Gifted Rider, and Steve's Blessing. And that about does it guys thank you so much for watching until the end you guys are absolute chads and as always a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members here on youtube the support you guys provide is absolutely amazing and i appreciate each and every single one of you do not forget to follow me on both twitch and twitter i'm trying to get to a thousand followers on twitch just so i can apply to be a part of the eso stream team that would be freaking awesome all right guys that's pretty much all i wanted to talk about see you